Hello, welcome to the course on polymers. Uh, in uh, this week, uh, we are focusing uh, on uh, the sustainability aspect uh, of polymers and uh, specifically in this lecture, uh, we will look at uh, uh, biodegradation uh, of uh, polymers. Uh, what we uh, will look at initially is uh, the overall degradation processes which happen uh, in the environment and uh, where is biodegradation vis-a-vis -vis other processes that happen and then we will take a closer look at uh, what do we mean by biodegradation and what is it influenced by. So uh, the polymers uh, and uh, whether they be composites, uh, whether elastomers, thermosets or thermoplastics are uh, subjected to various uh, degradation processes uh, in the environment. And uh, this is due to uh, basically exposure uh, to let us say UV. So, in general exposure to uh, atmospheric conditions and uh, this is because they are sometimes floating uh, on water, sometimes they are there exposed to just air, uh, they, they would also be embedded uh, in uh, uh, soil. In that case, the UV exposure will not be there, uh, but they will still be subjected to let us say humidity and other uh, additives. So, uh, because of this uh, exposure to radiation. Uh, we can have uh, processes such as cross-linking and chain scission or oxidation and hydrolysis. So, presence of uh, radiation which causes uh, free radicals to be generated, uh, which causes active centers to be generated in macromolecule and it can lead to breakdown of chains or it can lead to uh, formation of a hydroxyl group in oxidation processes. So, so therefore, all of these processes are possible and in fact, uh, this is what we prevent by adding lot of uh, additives to the polymeric system. Given that its service life is 20 years, we do not, we would like these processes to be minimized so that a polymeric part performs according to our expectations. However, once disposed, it is these processes over time then starts uh, degrading the polymer. The other uh, aspect of degradation that happens is because of the thermal and mechanical loading uh, which uh, this uh, polymer sees uh, depending on the weather conditions it can go from very cold to very hot. Uh, also uh, the uh, during flow uh, stresses are subjected sometimes uh, the polymer is getting uh, loaded due to other uh, materials being present in the system. So, therefore, there is in general uh, uh, pressure there are uh, there is flow conditions there is mechanical loading there is abrasion and erosion processes and breakdown. So, all of these also lead to uh, degradation of uh, the materials. And uh, we also have uh, biodegradation, uh, which is what we will discuss uh, from now on, which uh, basically implies the involvement of biological species. Uh, it could be microorganisms uh, which are involved. And so, we will discuss how uh, biodegradation is different compared to these other degradative processes. One other aspect of uh, uh, polymeric transformations that can happen is uh, sediment transformations. Uh, and we know for example, that petroleum is a product is available because of the biomass uh, that uh, got embedded in sediments uh, millions of years ago and then uh, getting transformed. So, therefore, uh, under conditions where there is no UV light and even presence of moisture will be less, but because of thermal and uh, uh, high pressure conditions, chemical transformations can happen which lead to sediment transformations. So, it is thus this kind of uh, transformations are also possible in case of polymers. So, one other uh, uh, key thing to remember in uh, many of these processes, the uh, weight will change. The polymeric material uh, weight gain may be there or weight loss may be there depending on what kind of degradation reaction that is going on. Uh, disintegration is certainly there as part of many of these uh, mechanical erosion or uh, because of uh, material becoming brittle due to oxidation. And then uh, we can also have uh, growth of organisms on the subs these as substrates. So, on the surface of a plastic material, uh, a bacterial colony can grow. However, none of these imply that biodegradation is specifically happening. So, uh, biodegradation therefore, is a is much more than uh, just looking at weight loss and disintegration and growth of microorganisms. In fact, these have to be combined together in a way that it becomes a biological process the way several other biological processes are there 
in our system. So, the factors which are involved before we can uh, look at biodegradation in more detail is for example, how is the polymer being uh, disposed and which context are we thinking in terms of biodegradation of polymer. So, are we thinking of biodegradation in a compost environment? Are we treating biodegradation along with sewage and various other uh, waste materials which are uh, coming out uh, from an average uh, uh, settlement of uh, human beings? So, is it uh, being degradation in which context? Similarly, is presence of oxygen there or not? So, there are several ways in which we can think of biodegradation and each of them is a different mechanism of biodegradation. The other key thing about biodegradation in the context of uh, polymeric uh, material and given our overall emphasis on uh, sustainability and waste management, we have to necessarily talk in terms of the rate of biodegradation because the rate of biodegradation uh, should be greater than the rate of accumulation or rate of our use of these materials. Because uh, if the rate of our use is much higher than biodegradation, then it is no use because then anyway these materials will get accumulated in the environment. And uh, one key feature of how we talk about uh, biodegradation process is by recognizing what are the intermediate and end products. So, the idea here is the fact that we have microorganisms whether it is bacteria or fungi which utilize the polymeric materials as uh, food sources. They are responsible for breakage of macromolecules. Sometimes the macromolecular breakage can also be assisted by the other degradation processes that we talked about. So, a macromolecule can broken down to smaller fragments and then uh, this gets utilized so that the final product of this process are only in terms of uh, carbon dioxide and water which is what happens with all the biomass degradation that happens around us whether it is plant or uh, dead uh, bodies or any, any, any biological species basically undergoes degradation to produce carbon dioxide and water. And uh, some of the inorganic substances and high molecular weight compounds lead to a residue or minerals. So, these are the only end products that should be there. Uh, of course, as part of uh, the overall biodegradation process, biomass can be generated. So, the number of bio bacteria which are using these polymers as food source can grow and, and that is how they in fact use the polymeric materials as food source. And then of course, the overall biomass uh, in combination with uh, soil and uh, other cellulosic uh, materials which are there in the environment can lead to humic materials as the generation. So, uh, only these set of intermediate and end products are considered uh, when we have a biodegradation process. And uh, one other key thing when we think of biodegradation of polymeric materials is that none of the intermediate products that are generated whether it is the smaller fragment or oxidized or hydrolyzed version of the fragment, this should not be toxic. So, none of them should be toxic uh, to the surrounding environment. And, and so, this is something a key in terms of recognizing the fact that yes, polymer is getting biodegraded in the environment, but it is also getting biodegraded in a sustainable manner without impacting the surrounding in a very significant manner. So, therefore, uh, biodegradation or biological degradation has to have certain number of requisites. And uh, this is that first of all enzymes which are of origin from the biological species have to be involved. So, this is one key indicator that it is a biodegradation process as opposed to other degradation processes that we talked about which is like photo degradation and so on. And uh, because all of the biological pathways involve acids and peroxides, the overall process of biodegradation is pretty much helped by the presence of these acids and peroxides. One of the key things is that the breakdown of macromolecule is key for biodegradation. Why is that? Because very large macromolecules cannot be used as food source by a microorganism or any other uh, biological species. So, therefore, fragmentation as a first step is required before 
utilization of uh, the carbon source as food can proceed. So, chain cleavage is an important aspect. So, chain cleavage can be enzymatic, it can also happen through hydrolysis and oxidation using other means. So, this can have combinations of uh, steps. However, involvement of enzymes is must when we talk in terms of biodegradation. And so, generally therefore, uh, products will be formed which are oligomers of a few monomers, maybe dimers and then uh, also the derivatives which are oxidized or hydrolyzed versions of these uh, monomers and oligomers. And then finally, once the formation of these uh, smaller molecular weight uh, products has been achieved, then uh, they can get uh, assimilated into the microorganism or lead to basically mineralization. Because the only uh, solid residue that remains is these minerals while carbon dioxide and uh, uh, water uh, can uh, escape. And so, the microorganisms which are involved could be bacteria, fungi or algae. So, variety of these uh, depending on which polymer we are talking about, depending on which uh, uh, environment we are talking about, depending on which mode uh, are we talking about, we have variety of these species which can do the role of biodegradation. So, going further, because of this complexity of the overall biodegradation process, the this degradation rate uh, depends on lot of factors. So, for example, it depends on uh, conditions such as how much is the water present. Uh, what is the temperature at which biodegradation is happening? What is the pH? And uh, as we have seen that uh, there are acids involved, there are other intermediates and uh, enzym enzymatic catalysis is involved. So, all of these depend heavily on the ionic environment and therefore, pH uh, determines the interaction between these different species which are reacting. We also therefore, uh, immediately can recognize that uh, ionic strength and salts can also influence these electrostatic interactions between different uh, molecules which are available. And uh, then uh, amount of oxygen, because we have oxidative processes, we have uh, hydrolytic processes. So, both amount of water and moisture play a crucial, uh, water moisture and oxygen play a crucial role uh, in terms of determining the biodegradation rate. And uh, given that microorganisms require several other nutrients in smaller quantities which are uh, calcium uh, and other uh, nutrients uh, which are required. And so, this uh, their presence as well as the amount in which they are present also determines the overall biodegradation. And uh, on the other side, uh, the polymer itself is a very significant uh, determinant of what the biodegradation will be. And that is why for example, polyethylene is not biodegradable because it does not allow any of the biodegradation processes to take place. Its chains cannot be cleaved by uh, enzymatic ways. Uh, its chain cannot be even cleaved uh, very easily using photo or thermal degradation processes. Secondly, even the smaller fragments uh, may not always act as food source because the smaller fragments are still large enough to be assimilated in the form of minerals and production of carbon dioxide and water by the microorganisms. And uh, if we have a polymer which is semi crystalline, then again access of water to the polymer is much less. And so, generally basically the structure of polymer is very important in terms of determining the overall biodegradation. So, one key determinant is of course, the molar mass. I have said this uh, multiple times that uh, larger the molecular weight, larger the molar mass more difficult it is to biodegrade and that is why chain cleavage is the first set of uh, processes that have to happen before a polymer can be biodegraded. The overall uh, structure uh, in terms of functional groups present on the molecule, the overall set of uh, electronic environments which are there on the macromolecule. So, that is it susceptible to oxidation or hydrolysis or any other reactive steps. So, general reactivity of macromolecule is a big uh, factor. Uh, morphology uh, in terms of uh, crystallinity, if it is a blend material, what are the different uh, types of domains which are there, uh, whether uh, the material is cross linked, are there other additives which can uh, affect uh, the uh, biological uh, processes. For example, many times we may add a fungicide for many of the existing uh, polymeric products. So, clearly that will prevent biodegradation from happening. 
So, additive and purities uh, are, are an important uh, source which determines the biodegradation rate. Uh, diffusion porosity are also very important because smaller molecules have to move in and out either as reactants and products. So, water has to go in, oxygen has to go in and similarly monomers and oligomers have to move around so that uh, microorganisms can assimilate them. So, generally diffusion and uh, porosity of these uh, polymeric materials as they are biodegrading influences their biodegradation behavior. And uh, of course, uh, the overall mechanical strength and stability in terms of thermal and UV plays an important role in terms of uh, determining the biodegradation rate. So, generally the biodegradable polymer can be thought of in a variety of uh, different families and uh, uh, many of these we have already discussed uh, several times in the course. For example, we looked at PHB uh, hydroxybutyrate which is a common example uh, of a biodegradable polymer which is produced by bacteria. We uh, looked at starch based polymers. So, cellulose and starch are two most common uh, macromolecules uh, and, and so the use of starch as uh, materials for uh, polymeric products. Uh, is being investigated quite significantly. We also have of course, uh, blends of uh, polymers with starch. So, let us say polyethylene starch blends. So, in this case uh, of course, uh, this is not a biodegradable material because only starch is biodegradable, polyethylene is not and more importantly because of the presence of polyethylene, the access to water and uh, oxygen and microorganisms will be severely limited for starch which is present also. So, therefore, to consider uh, starch blends where the starch is only available in limited amount and uh, the other polymer is not biodegradable is you cannot really have that. So, therefore, uh, even though there are lot of products out there uh, which are starch based blends, uh, the their main function is to say that uh, we are reducing the amount of uh, polymeric materials which are non biodegradable and also which are based on uh, let us say non renewable source uh, such as uh, petroleum based sources. So, with this as a justification there are lot of products out there, but if you think in terms of their impact on the environment, uh, lack of biodegradation, generation of microplastics uh, being present in the environment over longer periods. So, all of those are still significantly there. We also discussed polylactic acid which is a very important uh, 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 polymer. So, polylactic acid and PHB are the two most commonly used uh, biodegradable polymers today along with uh, the polyesters, uh, aliphatic polyesters and we also have copolymers where you have combination of aliphatic and aromatic rings uh, in, in a, along a macromolecule backbone. And of course, uh, all throughout the course we have also discussed uh, several polymers which are of uh, na na natural origin. Things like cellulose, uh, xanthan gum, casein which is a protein, uh, collagen which is there in tissues and pectin which is there in many plant species. And, and so, this is a, a, a wide variety of uh, biodegradable polymers. Some of these are uh, made by microorganisms like PHB starch which is again made in the biological world, uh, lactic acid and polyesters which are actually synthesized, but they are biodegradable. They are synthesized using different types of raw materials which could be petroleum origin or non-petroleum origin. And then we have uh, polymers from the natural world itself uh, which are cellulose, xanthan gum, casein and again these are either made by microorganisms like xanthan gum or they are made like an by animals like casein and then they are available as part of plant world such as cellulose and pectin. So, so we have a wide variety of these polymeric systems because of which uh, gradual progressions towards reduction in the usage of uh, polymeric materials which are non biodegradable to those polymers which are biodegradable is happening. So, we have a progression where more and more applications we have started to use these biodegradable polymers. While we do this, uh, there are a few things that we should uh, consider as uh, scientists and engineers and uh, that is basically uh, the overall idea of biodegradability and how does it integrate with our current practices of 
waste management. So one of the key thing related to biodegradable polymers is of course the cost associated with it. Uh, cost is not uh, in only in terms of let us say the final product, the raw material costs and the processing costs which will of course get reflected in the final material cost, but also impact in terms of what is the reagents and substances which are used in manufacture of these biodegradable polymers. So given the main emphasis on sustainability, we have to look at various aspects before we can conclude of their uh, overall impact being less in terms of overall biogeochemical cycles. And also as I mentioned already, duration of biodegradation is a key factor. Uh, we said that you know the biodegradation rate has to be higher than the uh, use rate so that accumulation in environment is not there. And sometimes this is not uh, very easy to achieve. Uh, an example is uh, let us say biodegradation in landfill where we have a stack of uh, wastes of all different kind and uh, generally many of these landfills are designed so that uh, you know no moisture or air it is subjected to and contact with surrounding is minimized because landfills will contain all different kinds of wastes including hazardous substances also. So, to prevent uh, the migration of hazardous substances to the air or soil or water which is surrounding, we would tend to try to make sure that uh, the landfill is isolated. And given that is isolated, uh, then can biodegradation happen in such a situation? Even the pH or uh, uh, the other conditions of this landfill, are they appropriate for biodegradation? And it is no good if we say that biodegradation under certain condition happened in 15, 20 days or uh, happened in 2 months, but when we put it in a landfill, it takes 400 years to biodegrade. Then again, we are back to square 1. So therefore, we have to think in terms of biodegradation under what condition. And one other key feature is given that we have so many other materials which we are uh, attempting to recycle more and more and we have mechanical and chemical recycling methods so that our impact on environment and uh, is minimized and sustainability is improved, what happens when we add biodegradable polymer in this mix? And biodegradable polymer because the way the micromolecular nature is are not suitable for recycling. So now if we have a stream where there is polyethylene, polypropylene and a biodegradable polymer, how do we then take care of recycling of this mixed waste? In which case we have a biodegradable polymer, but we cannot leave it for biodegradation because it is mixed with polyethylene and polypropylene. We cannot recycle it even though there is large amount of polyethylene and polypropylene because there is some amount of biodegradable polymer. So, so do we then end up uh, complicating the overall waste management scenario? And so these are some of the things that we have to think of while we consider looking at uh, biodegradation of these polymeric systems. So with this thought, uh, we will uh, stop here and uh, look at a few examples of uh, biodegradable polymers in subsequent lecture. Thank you.